I, I always look at this because we're looking at it in terms of like sporting performance rather than purely just a skill practice. But even if it was just like a non-fatiguing skill, you're better off chunking down with little rest periods and coming back and then coming back and resting, coming back. But especially when it comes to something that's causing fatigue, that becomes even more pronounced because of the like energy systems and recovery and the quality of your movement patterns are affected by fatigue. So having those rest periods actually consolidates that skill. Fighters, welcome back to another episode of Heatrick Muay Thai Performance. So there's there's two things you need to look at. It's either it's either a new skill you're trying to learn or you're trying to repeat out a bad habit so you're treating it like a new skill and and for that we want very little or no fatigue. And then the other the other end of the spectrum is tried and tested skills that you're happy with that you want to test under fatigue so that they don't fall apart when you get tired. But you should only do that with ones that you're happy with your movements and they're not falling apart. As soon as they start to fall apart and going really ragged, it's just stop there. It's kind of, you're starting to bank poor, poor movement. So it does depend on the effort that you're putting into that technique as to how many repetitions you can get before it starts to get a bit shonky. <laughs> but even so, the research shows that you're better off actually switching up what you're doing. Right. So there's two, there's two things to think about here as well. So there is skill acquisition, which is picking up a new skill or rewiring something that you've been doing wrong. And then there's skill retention, as in how long-term is that after I've stopped training it, can I still do it? Or has it completely gone now? You know, I did it for one session. Well, at the end of the session, I felt great. Next week, completely forgotten it. <laughs> and I'm starting again. That can happen. Okay. The more repetitions you do, the quicker you build up a good stable pattern and the more that you'll retain it. So the number of repetitions is key, but also actually the way you subdivide those repetitions up makes a difference. So the research actually shows you're better off rather than clustering all your repetitions into like one session. You'll, you might feel by the end of that session, your skill performance, your acquisition was actually pretty good, but you're more likely for that to tail off and degrade and you won't remember it so well the next session, the next week or whatever. If you've spaced it with more breaks in there and coming back to it, you actually keep it much more robustly in terms of like, how many reps am I doing before I take that little break or how long am I going for? That depends on how much power and fatigue you feel you're building up in it. So. Typically, anything from like one shot, <laughs> sporadically placed, through to a burst of up to 30 seconds is kind of where you're at. And it depends. So, you know, like one shot can be like full power, whereas like 30 seconds might be 80, 70 percent power or something like that, that you're, you're rehearsing. But it's, that will affect how, how long that burst goes for. And actually, rather than repeating, like, so for example, if you're doing like a round kick, the, the research actually also shows that being more random with you throwing that kick is better than just doing a block of the kick, the kick, the kick, the kick, the kick. Thanks for listening. If you found this valuable, please like, subscribe and share with someone else it could help too. Please give the podcast a review or comment below. We'd love to hear from you. As always, you can visit heatrick.com for more Muay Thai performance podcasts, videos, articles, and guides. Catch you next time.